Hey there viewers, Della here, and welcome to a quick overview of the new Steam beta update for their community and chat. I just want to cover this and sort of talk about it because I think that is a great step in the right direction that Valve is making for their platform, and it's something that they honestly should have did forever ago. I don't know why they're deciding to make the change now, but I'm hoping it's a sign of good things to come on the platform. The biggest change that they're making with this update is essentially integrating a Discord-esque platform into the Steam client. If you click down here on friends and chat, it's going to bring up your friends list, which looks significantly different than it has for the last decade on Steam. Now to get down into the specifics of what is different, one of the biggest things they added was invisible mode, which is something people have wanted for years, but they just never got. You could get it on every other chat platform, but not Steam for some reason. Another thing you're going to notice is this favorite section here. So this starts out as an empty space, but when you drag anybody up, it's going to create the favorite section, allow you to populate it with people who you're going to talk to the most on Steam. You can also just quickly pull people out of it if you don't want to have them there anymore. I would prefer to have El Flapo in my favorite section, so we'll just search him and bring him right back up. They also added in a sort by game section. If there were two people playing Fallout 4, it would sort Fallout 4 at the top as Fallout 4 and show the two people playing it. While I had an example of the new sorting system available to me, I decided I'd show you guys. You can see here they're all sorted by different games based on who's playing what. I think it sort of clutters it up and honestly, I don't care about who's playing what. It'll also show little tabs if people are playing together to let you know who is in a party together and when you can join them, that sort of thing. I think it's a cool system, but I also think there should be an ability to shut it off if you don't want it. Alongside this new sorting system, they have also implemented a gear icon here that allows you to change off your notification settings, how your friends' names appear if you have nicknames assigned to them, and a voice tab to change how your microphone picks up when you're in a voice channel in a group chat, which we'll go over a little more in a minute. You can see here they also have options for voice detection, push to talk, and echo cancellation, noise cancellation. All of these are what you'd expect from a voice application. I still think that they could flesh these out a little bit more and make them a little more comprehensive, kind of the way TeamSpeak does it. And they've also sort of revamped the menu system that you get when you click on somebody. They've sorted it and made the stuff that you're going to use more often a little bit more readily available. Steam has always sorted your friends in a manner that made sense, which was playing games, online, and then offline. Now they've added in the away as a sorting option as well, which isn't that important really, I feel like, since a lot of times people are still at their computer, it just says they're away because they haven't touched Steam in a while. And they don't even show offline people by default. You have to click open to show exactly who is offline. The next portion of this friends list that you are not going to recognize is going to be the group chat section. You can click and drag this down to be almost gone, but there's no way to get rid of it permanently. I think they should add that. There's no reason to not get rid of the group chat option, especially if people just don't use group chats. Within the group chat section, you can see that I have a single group chat made. If I click on this, it opens it up here, and I prefer to have the docking option turned on, which snaps all of your chats into the friend window and makes it a little bit more of a cohesive client, almost like its own thing, separate from the Steam client in the background here. Once you have these two windows docked together, it's pretty handy because every person that sends you a message or anyone that you start a message with is going to get put into a new tab here. So everything relating to your friends on Steam will be in one collected area, and you can quickly sift through them and talk to people as you need. The group chat section of this update is probably what I'm most excited about, simply because I never used Discord and didn't want to create an account. So it's nice that now Steam, which I already have an account on, has something that is so similar and allows me to create a continuous group chat with people without having to leave a platform that I'm already familiar with. You can see over here to the right, you have a list of the members that are currently in and respective menus to access them. If you prefer a less cluttered look, you can collapse this down and it'll still show anybody who's connected, anyone who's not, and you can still right click and go to any relevant information on them. Over on this side, you can see the menu that contains all of our channels. We have both text and voice channel options. Initially, my concern was that there wouldn't be a way to create a permanent voice channel within the Steam app. I thought that you'd always have to create one, almost like a Skype style. I'm really glad to see that you can make a permanent voice channel and join and leave it as you please. It has mute options for both headset and for your microphone. I really do hope though 
that they create a hotkey scheme for these. And there's also a channel specific chat where you can type anything in here and people who are in the voice channel will see it. But once the voice channel is gone, it will clear the chat. And yet again, if you prefer a less cluttered look, you can sucker these guys down and make it a little cleaner. As far as communication within the group chat, it's pretty fleshed out. You can use text obviously and voice, which we went over. You can attach images from your local machine. And whenever you embed a link from the internet, it immediately embeds it rather than sending a hyperlink that someone has to click. These can be adjusted size wise or completely hidden if you do not want to see them. And it also works with YouTube videos. So you can play YouTube videos directly from the Steam group chat client if you like. I have noticed that mine sometimes just crashes my Steam for no reason though. So yet again, it is something they need to work on. The one thing I wish they would add is the ability to copy an image directly into the chat from your clipboard, which would make it nice so you don't have to send people a link if you don't want them to know what site you got your hentai from. My friend also mentioned that it would be nice to have messages editable so you can go back and change if you make a typo or something along those lines, which I can agree with. There's no reason to not have editable messages. It would also be useful to have text formatting from Steam because I know that they have the option for bold and spoiler and different types of text formatting. It simply does not work within their chat system right now, only on community pages. And lastly, I would like to see the ability to edit or even remove the home channel. I think there should be an option to do that regardless since you can always re-add it if you need it. There shouldn't be a distinct need to have a channel inside of your group chat. Now that we've talked about some of the things I'd like to see, let's go back to what you can do with the group chat. We have notification options so that you can set it up to get notified for every single message sent or only when you're mentioned or not at all. We also have an option for inviting via link so that if you're inviting someone off platform and don't want to add them to your friends list, you can do it that way. Yet again, just like Discord, you can set how long the time to live is on the listing. You can also just invite directly off of your friends list by typing in someone's name and adding them. If they're not part of the beta, you can't add them right now, but obviously once this comes out of beta, you'll be able to add whoever you want. And last but certainly not least, we have our group options. You can see what you can change here, as well as different channels. Permissions are pretty valuable, but I have not messed with them a whole lot. Within each permission, which you can create apparently as many as you like, you can change who can send messages, who's able to kick, ban, invite, change the channel information, all sorts of stuff. You can also see what invite links have been sent and remove such ones that you do not want to be active anymore. I would also really like to see them increase the size of emotes. There's no reason to have them be as small as they are. Every time that you send them, they are just stupidly tiny. And we can see there's obviously a larger resolution version of them uploaded. There's just no reason to not use that version by default so people don't have to mouse over them. Finally, I believe the last thing that has changed is the add friend option. When you go to add a friend, it actually sends you to a community page here where you can see quite a bit of a different layout. I imagine most of Steam is going to look quite a bit like this in the coming months. And you can now send an invite link to become friends with somebody. This will enable people to offer multiple friendships to a large group of people at a single time. It also makes searching for people painless. No longer do they have to search for you. You can just give them your invite link to your account. And I think that Steam has definitely needed to revamp their invite system for quite a while so it's nice to see them at least taking steps to make it easier to become friends with people rather than searching and never being able to find the person that you want to become friends with overall so far i'm really impressed especially considering this is just a beta and there's still a lot of things that are going to come to fruition in the coming months as this goes full release and more and more feedback is given to valve on their system I still think that this should have happened years ago. I don't know why it took so long for Steam to do this. I'm sure that they're seeing Discord success and realizing, hey, we should do something similar for our community. I'm just interested to see exactly what this leads to and what they plan to use it for in the long run that's going to make them money. Because the Valve doesn't normally make choices without it involving some sort of profit in the long run. So I have to imagine they have some sort of plan that's going to come from this. Whether or not you have used this system yet, let me know what you think. As someone who's never used Discord but has used TeamSpeak for a very, very long time, the voice quality in 
Steam is definitely not as good as TeamSpeak, and I've noticed that. I've also heard that in Discord, the voice quality is not as good as TeamSpeak. That's understandable since one app is designed specifically for voice chat and the other one is sort of a more widespread distribution without personally ran servers. But I am curious to see if this is going to be able to pull traffic from Discord. And if you think as someone who does use Discord, you would end up jumping ship to this instead since it is a more convenient platform built into something that you probably already use. I, for one, am pretty excited. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.